China wants to steal foreign technology. So it's targeting Israel. And Israel seems to like it. China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. The Chinese Communist Party wants to dominate the world, and it needs cutting-edge technology to get ahead of the U.S. and its allies. According to Chinese leader Xi Jinping, technological innovation has become the main battlefield of the international strategic game. Technological innovation? And that means the winner of this battlefield is whoever came up with the baby mop. Making your lazy baby clean up after itself is the greatest innovation of all time. But the battlefield Xi Jinping is talking about is both figurative and literal. China is investing heavily in its pursuit and integration of emerging dual-use technologies, which have both civilian and military use, hoping they will help the People's Liberation Army to surpass conventional military capabilities to achieve battlefield dominance. Even before Xi Jinping came to power, the Chinese Communist Party has always been eyeing foreign technology. It's like window shopping. But instead of buying what you see, you just steal the design and make your own knockoffs. The U.S. is waking up to China's technological ambitions. It's moving to keep advanced technology out of China. But the U.S. needs to do more than just keep an eye on American companies. It needs to keep an eye on Israel, too. That's because despite Israel's small size, it's one of the world's leading hubs of technological advancement and innovation. Israel prides itself in being one of the top countries for startups. Israel spends 5% of its GDP in research and development, the highest percent of any country, which is great for Israel and for allies like the U.S. who benefit from Israel's innovation. But it's also great for China, who loves window shopping in Israel. China's attention to Israel's technology goes back decades, even before China and Israel established formal diplomatic ties in 1992. Israel has produced a lot of sophisticated technology. For example, the Pegasus spyware that can infiltrate any smartphone. Not hard to imagine why China would be so interested. Israel-China relations began in 1979, when businessman Saul Eisenberg helped arrange a secret meeting between the two sides that resulted in the first of many deals to transfer defense technology from Israel to China. Over the next two decades, Israel transferred billions of dollars of military technology to China, all in secret. These transactions allegedly included technology to upgrade Chinese tanks, night vision systems, electronic warfare systems, Python 3 air-to-air -air missiles, fighter aircraft technology, and unmanned aerial vehicle technology. And it's not hard to figure out what China did with all that. This would be like giving a gorilla nunchucks and saying, don't worry, they're only going to use those nunchucks for self-defense. China recognizes the value that Israel brings. According to a 2006 article in the Journal of Xidian University, part of China's defense and public security apparatus, Israel's national defense industry has given our country many useful revelations in developing our defense industry. We should actively cooperate internationally, taking the road of absorbing, retrofitting, and developing. Of course, for China, absorbing, retrofitting, and developing often means stealing and making knockoffs. Well, it's almost like the power-hungry tyrants you conducted secret backdoor business deals with aren't always on the up and up. Even Daredevil could have seen that coming. China's military hackers targeted and stole sensitive information about Israel's Iron Dome missile defense technology. In addition to the dome, the hackers also hacked into three contractors that built the dome and stole intellectual property pertaining to Aero 3 missiles, unmanned aerial vehicles, ballistic rockets, and other technical documents. But despite the risks, Israel wants to keep economic ties with China. This can have serious political and security repercussions. I'll explain after the break. Welcome back. China has its eyes on Israel's tech. And despite the U.S.'s concern, Israel has been eager to increase trade and cooperation. Because sure, the Chinese regime stole their designs and used their weapons tech in the past to commit human rights violations, but there's just something Israel likes about working with China. 
During a 2017 visit to China, then-Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said, We are your perfect junior partner for that effort. I believe this is a marriage made in heaven. Really? A marriage made in heaven? I'm pretty sure marrying an authoritarian government that genocides minorities is the last thing a Jewish leader should want. That sounds more like a marriage made on some horrible reality TV show. As Chinese state-run media put it, China-Israel ties bloomed spectacularly. Now, China is Israel's third largest trading partner, behind the EU and the US. But through economic trade, investments, and programs, China has been infiltrating Israel's tech sector in a lot of ways. The most straightforward way is by acquiring Israeli tech companies and paying top dollar for Israeli engineers. If buying Israeli companies isn't an option, China entices them with the Chinese market. Everyone loves the Chinese market. Even Disney bends over backwards to stay there. What can I say? There's just something they like about working with China. China also invests a lot of money in Israel. And it's no surprise where that money goes. In the past 20 years, 97% of known Chinese investment in Israel deal with technology, including IT, communications, clean and agricultural tech, and robotics. And the other 3% probably went to shakshuka, but only because the CCP heard someone say that dish is the bomb. Business investment and stealing aren't the only ways China gets Israel's tech. It's also cooperating with Israel on academics and research. This is a big concern, because many of the students and scientists also serve as reservists in some of the Israeli Defense Forces elite technical units. According to Jeff Stoff, a former U.S. government official, Israeli scientists have engaged in joint research with at least five military research institutions in China. The projects range from new types of aircraft engines to improved surveillance capabilities. Not something you'd want to give the Chinese military. I wouldn't even want them getting their hands on a baby mop. Now, as you would expect from the Chinese Communist Party, they keep these programs under wraps as much as possible. For example, many Chinese purchases of Israeli companies are kept hidden from the public. Even Huawei's deals were kept secret until Israeli journalists uncovered them. I haven't seen anyone try this hard to keep a purchase secret since the last time I bought an insane clown posse album. What? I was young and naive. I'm sure you've all done things you regret when you were 35. According to one Israeli security company, the U.S. has warned of Chinese straw companies attempting to partner with Israeli companies to create corporations that can look very legitimate, but in fact are aimed at moving Israel defense technologies to China. For example, in 2013, the Bank of China was accused of laundering Iranian money for terrorist activity by Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad. Thanks to the Chinese government's pressure, Israel's then Prime Minister Netanyahu backed off from participating in a federal court trial in New York. Never thought I'd see Israel back off from pressing charges against Iranian supporters. Told you that Chinese market is really enticing. Israel's infrastructure is also at risk. By allowing Chinese state-owned companies to build facilities in its ports, Israel leaves itself vulnerable to intelligence-gathering opportunities. According to one security expert, it's possible to plant surveillance systems in heavy machinery used in the port, and these can transmit what they see or hear. Not even the port's cranes are safe, literally and figuratively, since the infrastructure is made in China. Israel is aware of these issues. Leading security experts in Israel have voiced concerns over deepening Chinese involvement in Israel's infrastructure and technology sector. In response to these concerns, the U.S. has pushed Israel's National Security Council to establish an advisory panel on foreign investment in 2019. Don't know why they need a whole panel, though. The only advising they need is stop doing business with a regime that puts minorities in concentration camps and also supports Iran. The Biden administration has launched high-level tech talks with Israel with an eye on China. In response to this, China said, launched? High-level? We gotta steal that! Previously, only India, Japan, and South Korea had this kind of dialogue with the U.S. As part of the dialogue, the U.S. and Israel agreed to establish a partnership on critical and emerging technologies, and to manage risks in research security, export controls, and investment screening. Time will tell how Israel will act concerning Chinese influence. 
Now, some say the U.S. is exaggerating how much China is a threat. Some say the same thing about me, too. That was actually 90% of the YouTube comments in the first five years of this channel. Some argue there's too much to lose if Israel distances itself from China. According to a director of the Israel-China program, Israel doesn't need to ditch China for America. After all, the U.S. has a lot of economic ties with China, so why can't Israel? Sure, it seems hypocritical of the U.S. to tell countries to cut ties with China, especially when the U.S. continues to approve nearly all tech exports there. But just because the U.S. can't wean itself off Chinese investment right now doesn't mean it's not good advice for other countries. And if countries don't stop letting China buy, copy, and steal their technology, it's going to come back to bite us. We can't just sweep all this under the rug, even with a baby mop. And now it's time for me to answer a question from a member of the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army. Those are the folks who support us on Patreon or Locals. Today's question comes from Lord Whiteskin on Patreon. How does the current state of China compare to when you started the show? Good question. When I started China Uncensored in 2012, Xi Jinping was only weeks away from officially becoming the new General Secretary of the Chinese Communist Party. People were hoping he'd be a reformer. China wasn't occupying the South China Sea yet. It hadn't completely taken over Hong Kong yet. The concentration camps in Xinjiang hadn't been built yet. China was the hot place for Western companies to do business. That's why people thought I was crazy talking about how the Chinese Communist Party was a threat. If only they listened. Thanks for your question and your support. And thank you to everyone else watching. If you want to support China Uncensored, head over to patreon.com slash China Uncensored. All it takes is as little as a dollar per episode. Link is below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time. Thank you.